Welcome back to Dum Dums and Dragons, where improvisers who've never roleplayed before journey into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Grand Wizard Bukake, your host. Our heroes saved the village of Ashvale, but they still need to find help for the crashed SS McSquiggly. Will they find the people and equipment they need to save their airship? How will the Thieves Guild respond to Merle Streep's cowardly murder of her fellows? And will Manny punish Quinny again for refusing to give him Bucky's soul? Find out next on Dom Doms and Dragons. Having finally found a way to get out of Ashvale, having sorted out uh, the issues in the woods, eventually word does come that the caravans are moving again. And although you don't necessarily want to travel with a caravan, a caravan sets off with a bunch of trading goods. They bring relief to Ashvale. And you kind of follow in their wake. They're on a regular trade route, so it's kind of awkward to just kind of sit on a cart full of random shit that's being transported back and forth. So you guys kind of set off into the woods. It's the first kind of downtime you've had in a while since the crash of the airship. Obviously, you you were dealing with the survivors and and getting the camp set up, uh, as well as dealing with the fires. Is there anything that uh, you guys want to touch on before we carry on with the adventure? I got to pull Juniper aside, away from Quinny. I'm like, hey, Quinny, go look at... Wow, what a moon. Uh, And then I grab Juniper and run behind a tree. And I'm like, I got a message from hell that you you can't tell Quinny about. Remember, these are no Quinny secrets. Mm -hmm. But a demon who is our friend who is dead. I don't know where he goes. Figure that out later. Who? A demon. His name is Jim Hellbent. Uh, His name was Jim Hellbent. And then I'm just like very sad (laughs) because he was murdered in hell. But he gave me this. uh, And I show her the scroll that's like got a bunch of like legal clauses written in Jim Hellbent's blood. And I'm like, if we can find a wizard who is also a lawyer (laughs) or or a wizard lawyer or a a demon lawyer, we can probably use this to save Bucky's soul from where Quinny has to get Bucky to sign the demon contract. What is what is this? What? What? Fuck it. <laughs> I just roll it you back remember, up and like, put Juniper it in a bag. Juniper was not part of any of that. Goblin Jr. turns to you and, and like nods knowing and is like, snarf, snarf. Thank God someone's following this. Yeah, uh, snarf. And then he nuzzles you a little bit. Yeah. And I, I hug him back and then I put the scroll piece inside my bag of holding that's under my armor where my tummy is. I'm just constantly amazed that you have all these relationships with demons. It's just shocking. Uh, most of them are pretty decent. Better than most people. I'll tell you that for sure. Okay. I'm open to it. <laughs> so with that, you, you meet back up with Quinny, who, you know what? You did see a nice moon. That was a, a little pleasant moment. And then huh? I show him my butt. <laughs> it's a less pleasant well, moon. How, how does it compare? I kick him. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like someone gently tapping your butt. Yeah. He's, he's, his, little, his little foot is, is the, adorable. The moment his foot touches my butt, I fart. <laughs> He should have known better. Yeah. This I, isn't new. I laugh and put my pants back on, and then I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> Goblin Jr. like presents his butt and he's like, snarf? I kick him. <laughs> he farts too, and then he goes over and cuddles up with butthole. I feel like this has been a very accurate uh, depiction of the game. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So you uh, spend a night resting up. If you need to regain any hit points or anything like that, you can feel free to do that. We'll consider this a long rest. Of course, as this is the start of a new session, you get all of your stress back. Morgan, I'll explain this quickly just so you have it in the back of your head. Stress is a mechanic I stole from a different game that basically allows you to magically reinvent things that exist. Uh, we talked a bit about it on... You use like a flashback, but, right? Yeah, yeah. Basically, so you can be like, oh shit, I need a crossbow. And it's like, why would I have a crossbow? So this one time I was fighting pirates and I killed one of them and I got a crossbow and it's my favorite crossbow and that's why I have it. And I'll be like, I guess. So just keep in mind, you kind of can have those to spend for flashbacks. So you wake up. Uh, it's kind of a misty morning in the woods. I think, Juniper, you're very comfortable in the woods and, oh, and this yeah. sort of stuff. But uh, Quinny, I feel like this is a little bit like Metal Gear Solid 3 for you, where you're just like, I'm used to sneaking around buildings and shit. This isn't great. So you're you're a little twitchy. And Butthole, I think you're just, you know. I've done wagon train before. I mean, yeah. as a mercenary back in the day. Um, and I'm going to say the caravan continued moving throughout the night. So they're kind of a ways away. Oh, fucking dicks. But I did send messages with them to help yeah. the thing. So better that they're going faster. Yeah. And they offered to bring you along with them. But they're definitely keeping up a faster pace, given that Asheville's been cut off for so long. So uh, you continue along the path. Again, it's just kind of a, a very pleasant morning. It's a little crisp, which is nice. Uh, there's a nice breeze. The trees kind of start to encroach on either side. The path becomes narrower. You can see that the caravan kind of had to split off in multiple directions, but uh, not in a panic or anything, just kind of like, okay, we know how to get the cart. We have to take a detour, blah, blah, blah. You are walking along, and can you all please roll me a perception check? Five for Quinny. Ten. Nineteen. Nineteen. So, Butthole, as you're kind of merrily walking along, you see Quinny kind of step on a stick, and you hear a very distinct snap. And even though you're unfortunately too close to do anything about it, 
You just have that split second like, oh shit. Uh, and all of a sudden, a crudely built wooden trap springs up around you. I think almost like a clamshell cage made of oh. like twisted vines and, and sticks, very Ewok style, uh, springs up and captures you in the road. Quinny or all of us? All of you. Nuts. <laughs> As you look around in, in shock, you're kind of expecting an ambush. Suddenly you hear kind of a, a rustling in the bushes and a small figure bursts through enthusiastically and you lay eyes upon Dottle. Hello, do I describe the character? Yeah, please. So you see tiny little goblin. He's got long black hair, a little pink ribbon tied in the back and big floppy ears, kind of like a beagle. Uh, little freckles, big old glasses, little sharp teeth. A big blue scarf and big baggy like brown coat. It almost looks like it was a uh, human sized child's clothing that's like literally tied to her so that it doesn't just fall off. And like little boots that again look like too big for her. They look like hmm. they were made for like a human child. Um, she pops out of the bush and she's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Everybody just count to 10. Okay. okay. One, Not a goblin. One, two, two, <laughs> two. Kill it. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Count one. Ten. Okay, you're, you're good. I got there. I counted while oh, he was I'm yelling. I'm there too. Okay. Ten. I just want to have. Quinny, say ten. What, what is this? <laughs> say ten. And we get out. No, that's not exactly how this works. I just want to have a little conversation. Everybody's okay with that? That's why I kidnapped you. Just for a little bit. So I just talk to you. This is the wrong way to go about having a conversation. Well, you but know this- what? I haven't had much luck beyond this so i'm kind of out of ideas at this point because you know that uh, goblin thing you just that's how most conversations go for me so now you can't run away realistically you don't really want a conversation it seems like you want a monologue so why don't you tell us what's going on and we will make sure the halfling is quiet thank you all right so you guys seem like lovely folk i need lovely folk that also just happen to be very very tough because i'm in a little bit of a dilemma so i gotta find this like really scary strong witch and in case you haven't noticed I'm very small, um, so I was just wondering if you guys would be willing to come with me on a little adventure to find the little witch named Bobby Yaga. Well, why do, why do we need to find this witch? Did the uh, witch make you small? Uh, oh, there's a good question. Uh, she owes me money. Oh, seriously, <laughs> Quinny can get on board with this <laughs> kind of quest. This quest. How much money are we talking here? Oh, a lot of money. Oh, interesting. And would you be willing to share that money for our services? Uh, Yes. Quinny, I can see the dollar side of you. I'm like, just a second. We need to do like a huddle. And I try to turn around within the cage, but I really can't. Do so I then, have to roll a deception Yeah, please <laughs> roll a deception check. And uh, Quinny, I'm going to need you to please roll me an insight check. Because what if I can, want it to be we, true? Can we all roll an insight check? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. Quinny, roll a disadvantage because you want it to be true. 21. So we'll go with the five that was on the die there. Uh, and that's just a five. Yeah, this goblin's going to give you so much fucking money. Oh, man. Did you hear that, guys? A million dollars. Uh, I heard a million dollars. I got 12. I mean, you're all about new friends, but, like, something doesn't track here. Juniper, you do not buy this story at all. Witches don't have gold. No. Can Echo fit through the cage? The bars are, uh, again, it's like a crudely built wood trap. So I'm going to say Echo could probably squeeze through with difficulty, similar to Goblin Jr., also, Butthole did want to call a huddle. Do you want to be transforming as the huddle happens or like? Yeah. Let's just <laughs> Okay. Trans- so we, I managed to turn around and I try to like hide Juniper when I see she's starting to get shorter. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like step in front and Goblin Jr. helps. And I'm like, do I see one of my captives is getting shorter? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, roll me a perception check. Okay. I th- Butthole's pretty big. And I think Goblin Jr. is doing some distraction tactics too. 15. 15. Yeah, you can see they're definitely trying to hide something. Something's afoot. But guys, here's, here's the thing. This makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> Quinny, you know witches aren't about gold. That's dragons. If Why it was a I dragon, they'd have a ton of gold. Because we've killed witches and wizards. And how much gold did they have? None. When we killed that one dragon. A lot of gold. I may have killed a witch without knowing it. I don't remember any witches. <laughs> witches and wizards are the same thing. It's an unfortunate gender binary, <laughs> but it is one. It, it's an accepted thing. Some people decide to change whether they're a witch or a wizard. At this point, how my Echo's probably fully Echo. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Juniper, you've transformed into Echo. Um, may I, when I see her transforming, be like, 
And can I have like little thunderbolts coming out of my? Almost like um, I don't know how to describe it, but like it's static is is happening. Sure, like static starts, starts like, flying just, off like, your hands. Yeah. Um, so static starts flying off of Donald's. On, like I just want to like a show of force. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's the, the like, wizard equivalent of ripping off my sleeves. <laughs> right, right, right. It's it's the the gloves are off. Yeah. Um, so sparks begin to oh, dance I- over your hands inside the cage. You can see Echo, who looks like I'm very small. I'm a small child. I look about five, six years old with like pale, pale skin, wearing like a black dress, black hair, black eyes. No, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) And then I just say, are you just getting smaller so we could have a conversation? I don't like this. (laughs) Donald, you're feeling very uncomfortable. You've got lightning dancing over your fingers. Uh, I'm usually very uncomfortable. Echo is glowering at you out of the cage. Quinny's still trying to figure out whether he's killed a witch. Donald, here's the thing. I think your thing about the money is a lie. But uh, what? Yeah. here's the thing. House Farch, I'm Butthole Farch, ruler of House Farch. This it's is my a hand. To meet you. It's Juniper, my hand, and this is Quinny, my court jester. He's very motivated by money. Can I reach out my hand to, to shake? Yeah, I think I can probably. The, the I, lightning is no longer there. I can probably hand. fit, like, just my hand. Like, I can't yeah. get the wrist out, but I just got the hand there, sure. so we shake. It's very nice to meet you. We're actually, like, less interested in money. He's very interested in money, but the rest of us are less money focused than honesty focused, oh. you know? So, like, what's going on with this witch? She sounds terrible. Echo's just like singing to herself quietly like, If you don't tell the truth, I'm going to eat all of your tooths. <laughs> <laughs> she just kind of stares at Echo for a bit like, Okay. <laughs> it's very nice that you guys were honest with me when I was honest with you and I'm very sorry that I lied to you, but you know, I haven't met many people that are honesty focused so far in my little journey. So... I need to go talk to the witch, and I don't really want to tell you guys why, but it's really, really important. Like, kingdom-sized, life-changing, life-or-death importance. So you're telling me that there might be, if I'm reading between the lines here, and by between, I mean you sort of laid it out pretty cleanly, but, like, there might be a kingdom that we could befriend if we go on this quest. Sounds like there's a lot of money at play here. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I'd like to slip through, squeeze through the cage. Can you roll me a dexterity check, please? 19. So, uh, Doddle, you're like, you know, you've, you've come to this semi-confession and, you know, you're really, you think maybe you found trustworthy people and then you just feel breath on your shoulder and there's a, a spooky <laughs> little girl standing there eyeing your teeth. I, I, immediate, I immediately transform back into Juniper, though, so I... I know echoes. So you terrifying. you watch this tiny child start to grow and reform. It's actually more terrifying somehow. And then you get shot in the back. Uh, everybody, please roll initiative. What? Wait, not by not by Juniper. Though. No, no, no. A bolt comes flying out of the bushes. Me, I got shot in the back. You did. I got an eight too. That's probably good. six. Quinny is at ten for initiative. I've yep. got fifteen. Doddle, you take three points of damage as a uh, crossbow bolt hits you in the back. You can hear kind of rustling in the bushes, and you can almost hear like a mechanical cranking oh. as, as someone seems to reload. So top of the round, the assailants in the bushes are going to open fire. So one of them hits Doddle. Juniper, you're standing outside and are a big target. So you see a, a rapid fire. Three sort of small crossbow bolts come flying out of the woods towards you. Mm, uh, what shit. is your AC? 17. You'll take two hits. Okay. Um, so two two bolts managed to pierce your armor. You find that these things are flying at, at a stronger rate than a, a regular crossbow. Mm. That's a little surprising and a little unpleasant. Because you are currently vulnerable to things, you are going to take 25 points of damage Shit. from the two bolts. The other one is going to fire at Doddle. Doddle, what is your AC again? Uh, 14. 14. It was squishy. So two will hit. Oh, no. Uh, you will take 13 points of damage. Wow. And you can hear someone yelling in Goblin, which, Doddle, you understand. Does anyone else speak Goblin here? I speak Orc, so I'm probably getting about half of oh, it. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I so, speak Orc as well. So, Doddle, you hear, there she is, get her. And you guys hear, the one that is female over there fights, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite when there's like longer text underneath than the word yeah. said in the foreign film. <laughs> cool. So that brings us to the end of them. Uh, next up, we have Juniper. I can draw my shield and position myself in front of of Doddle. Mm-hmm. Do we have a sense of how far away they are? The trap is kind of in the center of the pathway. Yep. Um, the woods are probably about 10 feet on either side of you. You and Doddle are standing on the west side of the trap, just outside it. The bolts are flying out of those bushes. So the same direction Doddle came from. I'm going to cast Moonbeam. Just in the general yep. vicinity of the woods? Yep. Great. 
So walk me through Moonbeam again, please. It's got it's got a good range. I yell out, "Light of the moon, protect me!" So a silvery beam of light um, will shine down. It has a five foot radius, forty foot high cylinder, mm-hmm. so like pale silvery light. And then when the creatures enter the area for the first time or start their turn there, they are engulfed in the flames. So are you casting that at the edge of the woods to yeah. prevent them from? Okay, yes, great. I'm so you're not yeah. like trying to so, target them. You're I just creating saw a right where the um, the bolts came from. Bolts came from. I want to try to get it like right in front of them because, as we know, Moonbeam disintegrates shit. It does. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to need you to roll me, please, a charisma save to try and aim. 25. 25, great. So, yep, uh, you saw where the bolts came from. Part of the reason you took the hits is you were just glaring into the bushes to see where <laughs> they were coming from. So you were able to effectively cast Moonbeam in. So what Super. is the, the effect? Whenever any creatures like enter the area for the first time or start their turn there, then they have to make a con saving throw and they'll take 2d10 radiant damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. Okay, great. The silvery light of your moonbeam illuminates the woods and you can see a, a goblin who seems to be very well equipped. It's different from any other goblin you've, you've seen to date. Mm-hmm. Holding a very complex looking crossbow, still wooden, but with sort of lots of gears. They're wearing goggles, kind of a, a steampunk vibe, mm-hmm. like leather long coat on a goblin. So it's like an adorable crop top on anyone else. And you can see the goblin adjust its goggles almost as if it's using them for sight and then rapidly cranking mm-hmm. Uh, the crossbow and you can see that the crossbow has a clip and it's actually like reloading multiple bolts uh, oh, and it kind of looks up at the moonbeam and is like uh oh or to you orc folk oh my problem <laughs> Yeah, a lot of it's inflection. Cool. So that brings us to Quinny. Uh, Uh, You're still in the cage. I got to get out of here. Just so Momo knows what Quinny looks like. Oh, yeah. What does Quinny look like? A little halfling. I've got like a cloak for being stealthy and stuff like that. And then just like leather armor under that. Right now I'm carrying a rapier and a short bow. And uh, I often get mistaken for a small child. I do get called a little boy every now and again. He's a very handsome small child. <laughs> He's also harassed by strangers sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'm picked up when I don't want to be picked up and shit. <laughs> by and, the scruff yeah. of his neck, yeah. as we often say. And so I'm, I'm going to try and scramble out of there. Again, it's, it's a crudely built trap, given that Doddle made it in her spare time. So you think you can either try and force it with athletics. You can try and squeeze through, but it'll be a tighter fit for you than, than Goblin uh, Jr. the Neko or Goblin Jr. What if I get rid of my thumbs? Like oh, yeah. yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, you're good. Uh, that said, there is also uh, sort of a latch mechanism that you can try and pick. Oh, dude, yeah. Give me that latch you might want business. It. So what do you want for that? Light of hand? Yep. I'll give you advantage because you've got thieves tools. Okay, so that's an 18. Yep, this was made by by a goblin wizard, not a master <laughs> trap smith. Uh, so you kind of reach through, feel around, find the clasp, and flick it up, and are able to kind of boot your way out the side. So, but I'm going to say that you can kind of muscle out after him. Awesome. Uh, on your turn. Quinny, you're now, though, we'll say that's your action, but you still have a bonus and a move. Would I be able to use the medallion of thought for a bonus? Yeah, I'd give you that. Sure. I want to reach out to Doddle's mind to see if this ambush is a surprise to her also, or if she was setting us up. Damn, son. Tyler, can you read off what that that their card says uh, so, in terms of what Dotto will need to roll? Spend one charge to cast Detect Thoughts. Surface Thoughts are basically, I think, what I get for free. And if I want to probe deeper, you will need to make a Wisdom save, Dotto. Oh, jeez. Yeah. If, if I'm just detecting Surface Thoughts, it uh, doesn't seem like there's a, oh, it's automatic? a defense Great. for that. Uh, so, Dotto, as you crouch behind your new defender, maybe, who might also still be a creepy child, you really don't know. This really, this kidnapping hero's adventure went, went horribly awry. <laughs> um, you suddenly kind of, you can almost hear a voice in your head that isn't your own and you can kind of feel someone attempting to page through your thoughts <laughs> Quinny, you get the sense that Doddle is completely surprised by this that's all i needed great okay uh suddenly the the presence is gone it was unpleasant you don't know where it came from or why this might as well happen <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool Quinny, are you gonna move anywhere yeah i guess out of the middle of the road i'll head to the opposite side of the road okay if arrows are coming out of the west side i'm gonna go east sure sounds good that brings us to Doddle. Really? I got an eight. I got a six. So it's all <laughs> you. Wow. I was okay. very surprised. Like so much more so that I watched you fall. And then I was just like thinking about it. Wow. Witches don't use crossbows. <laughs> <laughs> so while all that's going on, she's looking at you with like big old anime eyes. Like, ah, so awesome. Um, and then she's going to freak out and be like, ah, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And go up to the cage. And can I use my action to get you out of the cage? Yeah, I'll, I'll say that. So this cage is so strong. There's no way you'd be able to get it. 
you, right yeah, you, you click like the secret clasp that just makes the whole thing fall apart. I worked for four days on this. <laughs> you pull the one string that's holding all the other strings together. That's uh, the secret string. Yeah, and the cage falls apart around uh, butthole, which is great because it means he won't have to use his action to get out. I'll give that to you as a bonus because you, you know what you're doing. You're not trying to do anything complex. Yay. So the cage falls apart, showering sticks and twigs on butthole. Now you're standing in the middle of the road. Juniper is in front of you, kind of shield up. The moonbeam is hitting the trees. Quinny's kind of backed away, buttholes in the, the center of the thing. You know there are goblin archers in the trees. What do you do? Do I see any of the goblin archers? You can see the one that's lit up by moonbeam. The other two are obscured. That said, if you want to roll me a perception check, you can kind of like squint into the bushes and see if you can pick them up. I'm going to go after the moonbeam ones, cool. I guess. And I'm going to cast Scorching Ray. So awesome. like... Big old balls of fire fly from... She's probably screaming the entire time. Like, ah! <laughs> great, great. Exactly the kind of person you want to have unlimited power. I'm going to cast it at second level. Boop. Well, that's a 19, so that's probably good. Yes, right? that will hit. <laughs> um, 13 to hit. For second. Oh, second yep. Shot. Yeah, yep, that'll I got hit. three. Great. That'll hit? Yep, totally. <gasps> Fuck yeah. They're not strong. And that's an 11, so I guess... Uh, uh, no dice on the 11. Oh, that's a dirty 20 when oh, she yeah, adds yeah, her yeah, plus yeah, nine. Sorry. Oh, oh, then uh, yes, that'll also hit. 22. 22 points of damage. Yeah. You Jesus fuck that Christ. goblin up right proper. You can see he's kind of like <laughs> swinging his crossbow at the fireballs that are coming at him, trying to bat them away, and they just keep bursting on the crossbow. He looks pretty fucked up. He's still standing, but barely. Just going to yell out into the forest, if any of you attack my friends, that's what you're going to get. Exactly <laughs> like that. I assume you yell out in goblin? Yeah. So orcish friends, you hear like, listen, similar things mean bad, you. That brings us to butthole. Yeah, I look into the woods and I say, things mean bad, you indeed. Uh, and then In orc? It might even be common. I'm not really paying attention. But I <laughs> raise my hammer and I just yell, house farch! Uh, and I want to run into the woods. I'm not going to that moonbeam. <laughs> I've been burnt enough times. <laughs> Great. Can you roll me a perception check, please? 23. As you barrel into the woods, you can definitely see like a goblin not too far from you. Similar to the one Juniper found, this one is wearing like almost a telescope over one eye and is rapidly cranking their crossbow to reload as well. He's on the ground. I can fight him. Yep. Oh, yeah. Things bad, you. Uh, and then I want to run forwards and hit him with my hammer. Goblin Jr. is coming with me. So we're doing Stuff the dirty. Hammer. Yeah. Yep. Do dog goes low. I go high. All we right. want to, if we can... Hit him hard enough that he does like a 360 lands <laughs> on his head. <laughs> like this, or a 180 and then a 360 and then another one. Like, yeah, yeah. Just as uh, much spin as possible. You want to stooge him, stooge him through the air. Yeah, All right, exactly. Okay, so go ahead and roll with advantage. I assume you're using Goblin Jr. Yes, yes. Yep. That's a nat 20. I'm also charging that one up. So as I swing the hammer, a butthole of radiant energy appears at the back. It's red because it's hellfire uh, and it farts. So this pit is hard. Yep, um, gotcha. Thought I was looking at this like, less awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 21 damage to the goblin. You squarely smash the goblin off his feet. He has like almost a 180, but like not quite. But you did roll a crit. So just at the last second, Goblin Jr. headbutts him and that just puts him that extra way around. Uh, so he falls on his head. He'll take an additional three points of damage for a total of 24. So he's still up, but he's badly wounded. He's like, bad thing for me indeed. <laughs> <laughs> what did I hear? Oh, dear. I've been <laughs> mortally wounded. <laughs> That brings us to the other thing. So, Butthole, as you do that, you hear a rustling above you and two goblins drop from the trees with uh, swords. And they're like weird kind of like Final Fantasy 12-ish. Like they've got a lot of like gears and shit on them. And you see one of the goblins like quickly turn a little crank uh, and the sword starts moving up and down in like a, a cutting motion and he's going to take a swing at you. I do laugh because it's pretty funny. It but is. I, it's very silly. Also, he's so small. It's a high tech version of a magical knife someone would use to carve a turkey. Yeah, I was going like, to say, you're already thinking of using this for the next feast. Yeah, um, I'm like, oh, that'll be useful for me later, I think, as I try to hit him with my shield. Yeah, so uh, he's going to take his two swings. What's your AC right now, sir? 21. All right, he'll hit with one and he is going to do... 11 points of damage. It hits your armor and you're like, oh, that didn't hurt so much. And then it starts grading along the side. And it's, I also get screwed up because when I look at that, I do think about Thanksgivings back when I was a kid and my dad cutting the turkey and then also cutting me because he was very oh fucked God. up. And now he's dead and I'm never going to get to deal with this. And like, I just have a moment of existential despair. Yeah, it's it's a Hello Darkness, goblin. my old friend is playing as this weird yeah. goblin is just like, ah! It hurts like my feels hurt. Ryan, I'm begging you. Can your character have said that all that loud? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yay. It wouldn't be a stretch. No, it's very on par. Yeah, Are yeah. you okay? <laughs> the other guy uh, is going to take his two swings. Uh, he's going for your leg. 
He'll hit with one, and he will do also 11 points of damage. This guy's sword doesn't do the silly carving knife thing. He's just better with it. <laughs> so he just hits you twice. That brings us to the end of their round. You can hear them kind of yelling to their friends. Doddle, you would hear, quick, back to the camp. Orc people hear, let's leave home soon. That brings us to the top of the round with the goblin crossbow folk. One of them starts in the moonbeam. So go ahead mm-hmm. and roll your, your moonbeam. 19 damage. As his sword friends are like, quick, run away, back to the camp. He's like, you're right, we need to get out of here before we... And he slowly... uh, Thanos snaps. Yeah, like disintegrates uh, into dust. And his goblin friends are like, holy shit, what? And for you guys who hear, shit, what? (laughs) It's the same in Orcish and Goblin. I mean, swearing's a custom thing. So they're going to try and run. So the guy that you hit with a hammer can get an attack of opportunity on him because he's disengaging. Yeah, I'm Hondo P going to take that. I hate getting stabbed. The other one, you just hear some like rustling in the bushes and and he he disappears. 18 to hit. Uh, Yes, that'll hit. Great. And I want to try to do this one non-fatally. So I want to try to bonk him on the head, but just make him go to sleep. (laughs) Sure. 11 damage. He goes to sleep. (laughs) <laughs> painful, painful sleep. <laughs> and his friends are like, oh no, Jerry! And in my head, I'm like, I hope this is the first time he's got a concussion, because like the TBIs are a serious problem. <laughs> I mean, goblins do like football. Um, anyway, that brings us to... We don't have the greatest health care. It's a, a better... broken system. Oh, man. <laughs> don't get them started on unions. In my head, I'm like, this is one of those things we're going to fix with health farch. Uh, Medicare <laughs> for all. <laughs> also unions. Uh, Juniper, you've just disintegrated one goblin. You can see two big blades uh, attacking butthole. I'll end the moonbeam, yelling at the ashes as they disintegrate. I'm so sorry. Really pissed off that someone made me do that. <laughs> the, the ashes curl and dissipate in disappointment. Uh, you are and then I And then I'm going to turn around. Can I run to a butthole? Can I reach? Yep. I would like to take two massive slashes with Divine Smite on the first one. Sure. Just one on each goblin. They're just going to be like two-handed. Just yep. Thwack, double thwack. fucking thwack, thwack, yes. 19 to hit on the first one. Uh, yes, that will hit. And 22 to hit. Uh, yes, that yeah. will also hit. Five radiant damage plus four slashing damage. I rolled real shittily. <laughs> so A swift, unpleasant breeze blows across the goblin. <laughs> And uh, six slashing damage on the second. Why do I even bother? So I don't die alone. (laughs) (laughs) After gently scratching both goblins, you're now standing with Butthole against these two swords dudes. Quinny, you can see that Juniper and Butthole are kind of engaged in a combat in the woods. You heard one guy kind of run away. Doddle is currently still in the middle of the road, having thrown fireballs into the woods, which is new information for you. Yeah. Uh, What do you do? I'm going to uh, fire an arrow at the guys fighting my friends. Cool. 15 to hit. Yep, that'll hit. And since they're right up against them, that's sneak attack. Of course it it's is. It's all I got now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Betray Bucky, it'll make it better. <laughs> oh, 25 damage. You shoot the one that Juniper just managed to wound. You take him in the head. His head kind of snaps back. Uh, he falls to the ground with his blade still mechanically <laughs> jagging up and down, just like carving away at the foliage. He is dead. Uh, which brings us to Doddle. There is one sword goblin left standing. How far away is this goblin from me? He's probably about 20 feet. Can I run at him? Yep. All right. I'm going to book it at him. I'm going to jump up and be like, McCavity the mystery cat. Grab <laughs> 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 him. going to grab him and give him a big old hug and cast vampiric touch. Great. Do I have to roll to make sure that he's not going to turn with his meat? No, no, no. <laughs> he's 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 very busy uh, fighting a giant man in armor. He's he's not paying attention to the tiny screaming goblin. The three d six necrotic damage. Womp. Uh, that's uh, ooh six. Cool. Uh, and another six. Ah! Uh, Fourteen. Eh, thank you. Um, yeah, that, and I gain back. Seven. I get seven. Wicked. So yeah, I grab him and like black smoke appears around Doddle and it makes her look not that much more badass because it's still Doddle. But like a little bit. Yeah, like a little bit, yeah, you know? Yeah, legit. You know, it's like she put a pair of sunglasses on. It's like it's still Doddle, but... <laughs> but like now she's solving crimes. Yeah. Um, Wicked, you see the goblin twitch and, and convulse in horror. I'm sorry. He, he kind of drops to his knees and slumps back against you, Doddle. He's dead. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> so having successfully routed the goblins you have one unconscious one at your feet two dead the dust clears you've managed to save them off what do you do with your unconscious goblin first i want to take off his fancy goggles things and just be like quinny are these of use to you 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 shoot things can i have a look at these goggles sure can you roll me an insight check please 13. They're of an odd design that you're not particularly familiar with they do seem as though they're built to help sight ranged weapons 
I'm going to say they're kind of like a once a day thing you can use to get advantage on a ranged attack. They help with aiming ranged attacks, buttholes. So I don't know, maybe... Uh, you want to hang on to those? Yeah, I could, or no, I guess it's just me. Yeah, you're, the, you're the one who <laughs> yeah. does that. Do you, do you want this cranky crossbow thing? And I like pick it up. I'm holding it with two fingers because it's not a hammer. So I'm totally disinterested. And I'm like, <laughs> this seems weird. I mean, yeah, I'll hang on to it. Is it good? Let's have a look. <laughs> Okay, so that's a 13 again. While he's investigating that, I'm going to tie up the guy. <laughs> We've learned this sure. lesson before. Yep, so it's a mechanically loaded crossbow. You think that likely for you, since you're a bowman, this would be a bit too much work, but it does seem that someone who's proficient with it could fire multiple shots in a round rather than a single shot. Uh, yeah, I'll hang on to it. Sure. So you sling that into your pack. So, Donald, what up with this? This isn't a witch. Are these just random goblins? Or do you know these people? You guys are the coolest people I've literally ever met. You we just know. like fought all those goblins and you, you were tied while you just went straight to looting the bodies. You guys are so. What was the question again? So, do you know these goblins? Like, they shot you first, which oh. makes it seem like they have a problem with you more so than us. Do they have a problem with me? Yes. Do I know them? No. And that's apparently the way the world works, and it's really fucked up, and I don't like it. Humans hate me. Goblins hate me, and I'd very much like to go home, which involves going to see this witch. But for, as far as you know, goblins and witch are unrelated. As far as I know, yeah, but like, that'd be bad if they were related, but I don't think they are. Do you live with the witch? No. Like a roommate situation? No. or Why would I live with the witch? Because you said you want to go home, and that involves going to the witch. I said it involves going to the witch. Uh, we're, not, we're not living together. Going home involves getting the key to my house kind of thing. Like, I just thought... Think of it like yeah, she has the key to my house, and I can't get into my Did house. Did steal your house keys? This is such a tragedy. Just witches out there running around, stealing people's keys while I'm saying well, this. Well, I've met some very nice witches. <laughs> Let's not go jumping to conclusions. Donald, Donald, here. what did the witch do, actually? Uh, uh, she you stole know. her keys, and she has a million dollars. Quinny, Quinny, <laughs> Quinny, please. <laughs> She did what witches do, you know, like some magic stuff. And the magic stuff is not only preventing me from going home, um, but also someone else is living in my home and they probably shouldn't be there. So she sold your house to someone else after she took your keys. This is a not real estate exactly. crime. This is house farch business. I'm bandaging up my wounds from, <laughs> <laughs> from the previous combat. It's is so this count awesome. as a short rest, Tom? Yes, yes, totally. Great. And then once I start bandaging myself, you're so busy describing things as being awesome and clearly keeping a secret, Donald, that I just start bandaging you. While you oh, like, yeah. Avoid I have, like, answers. three crossbows sticking out of me right yeah. now. Or bolts. So Not like, crossbows. <laughs> that'd be really bad. <laughs> <laughs> they really hit you hard with those crossbows. I wait for you to get the most worked up and then just, like, pull one, hoping you won't <laughs> notice. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Should okay, we, like, I'm, pull them out? I'm going to pull the next. Them in? I don't know what to do. I'm going to pull the next one on three. Okay. No, 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 one. no, 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 no. Two, <laughs> yank. <laughs> you have to do it on two. That's what they told me to help with kids. She's like crying just a little Ugh. bit. Her glasses are fogging up with tears. It's not a cute cry. Her teeth are everywhere. Quinny, I, <laughs> Quinny, I can't I can't pull the third one. She's crying too hard. <laughs> can, can you do it? Yeah, give it here. No, Although, wait, 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 wait. Okay, don't count. Quinny, don't roll count. me a just strength check. It. Yeah, exactly. Roll a strength check. Here we go. So that's a 12 on the die, minus one for 11. You try and pull it out, but really it's it's wedged in there pretty good. It just causes more pain and, and suffering. You think if you put a foot up, you could probably pull it out, though. I'm putting that foot up. All right, go for it. You get advantage. It covers like oh, half good. of me. No, he's he's a halfling, so he's oh, also right, true, you're tiny. It's just two equal-sized people fighting. Mm. That's a 12 now. Yeah, you pull real hard, you push real hard with your foot, and eventually the bolt comes out and you kick Doddle to the ground. <laughs> There, I fixed it. You guys are still really awesome. Okay, listen, normally I just use bandages, but this is so goddamn sad that I reach down uh, and I cast Cure Wounds on you. Oh, thank so, you. I also I, forgot I, I stole seven points from that other guy. Yeah, <laughs> you I, look to the husk <laughs> at your feet. Yeah. Borrowed some yeah. health points. <laughs> so I, I fart and it swirls around me and you see the symbol of Moonhammer, which is like a hammer coming directly up out of the middle of a butt. Then it glows on my hand and then I touch you and the fart swirls around you, but your wounds start to close. And I heal you for 15 health points. And I heal myself for three. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves their own brand. That's what I'm going to call that, that rule. Uh, and I used hit dice during this short rest, so I'm back to Health. And Juniper, I assume, are you spending hit dice as well? Yes, I am. Great. I already have. 
<laughs> okay, so yeah. we've got a goblin prisoner, and the goblins are running back to camp, which means there's more goblins. Do we want to go to the witch first? We can interrogate this goblin. Does anybody speak goblin? I was getting like half of it. Um, I speak goblin. Quinny points to Doddle and says, what's your name? Doddle. Doddle. Mm-hmm. And you don't know this other goblin? There's no familiarity here at all? No, not all goblins know each other. All right, fine. That's a valid point, mm-hmm. Quinny. Look, all I know is... That's why I didn't assume she, she spoke goblin. All right, she I showed... I feel like I'd be a lot more distraught if I did know these goblins and, you know, I gestured I mean, to, like, the dead goblins. <laughs> distraught yeah. seems Ash to be, like, by. your thing. Oh, yeah, that's my MO, but right. I'm saying I'd be a lot more distraught. All I'm saying I is you them. showed up, you this trapped like, oh, us. Jerry. No. Is, is it Jerry? <laughs> They're all named Jerry. Oh, this is the Jerry tribe. I've heard of them. They're all named Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> it's very distracting, but there's Is that a Fallout reference? I wish it was, but I've never played that game. There, there's Jerry. literally a vault in Fallout yeah. where everyone in it is named Jerry. Well, then it's an accidental Fallout reference. Yeah. So they probably live in a vault. <laughs> <laughs> They're See, all named knows. Jerry. You know, goblins are drawn to caves. I will say... That for personal reasons, obviously, I'd very much like to go see this witch. But also, um, you remember how I said the whole like kingdom life or death situation is like dollars. part. Of, yeah, it's important. Like time sensitive. Yes. Okay, so we should like do the witch thing first. Yeah, because you know goblins will be around for a while unless we keep doing this. Okay, so I'm gonna reach down. Does anybody have some mittens? I look to the scarf and winter coat wearing goblin with the boots. Do, do you have Everybody mittens? Means, no. Oh. Can anybody knit? Basically, we've got what, this Where goblin. are you going with this line of questioning? I can knit. Do us- <laughs> okay, perfect. Juniper, can you make me some mittens but that don't have a thumb? I want no fingers on these mittens. Yes. I turn into a small gnomish woman. <laughs> I'm about 60 years old. I made a new member and, um, of the cast. Said, oh, yes, darling. Oh, I just have to get out my needles and my yarn. Perfect. I need I need a blindfold and I need the mittens that are the size of this goblin with no fingers whatsoever. Oh, no problem, dearie. Juniper, what's uh, what's this character's name? I'm Mrs. Paisley. Uh, Mrs. Paisley, Mrs. excellent. Paisley. Uh, Mrs. Paisley, what is what is your montage song for knitting these mittens and blindfold? Uh, Down with the sickness. <laughs> <laughs> It's bagpipes, but it's like a very like joyous bagpipe. Yeah, so it's like a thrilling right. montage set to yeah. just happy piping. Yes, exactly. Great. You proceed to knit. <laughs> what are the rest of you doing while this knitting is occurring? Why is she knitting? Why do we need mitts? We've got a prisoner. I'm not letting him go. We're going to talk to him later once we sort this out. But I don't want him stealing stuff out of the inside of my bag of holding. So we're going to put him in the bag? bag? Yeah. And then we're going to tie up his hands. And then we're going to blindfold him. And I'm going to put him in the bag of holding. And we'll talk to him later. I'm confused. What do the mittens have to do with this? Because if I leave him with his hands just tied up, I've got other stuff in the bag of holding that he could, like, take with his hands. So I'm taking away that ability for him to get thiefy. Are the mittens, like, knitted together? No, I'm going to I'm gonna tie the mittens off at the bottom so he can't take them off. But he can't, can't like, grab stuff and hide you it. You know what I feel? There's a shorter process we could probably, you know. I am not cutting off his hands. That's such a mean idea. Okay, honey. Mrs. Paisley, you've completed <laughs> making your mittens. <laughs> I'm just saying, what are mittens made out of? And I just I just walk up to the goblin and it's like, here you go, dearie. Ah, thank you. That's very sweet of you, no, but. Not you. Take, take the goblin. Take, takes them away from Donald. That's, That's okay. I understand. Mrs. Paisley, can you make another set for Donald? But she can have like thumbs and such. Oh, yes, of course, my love. Ah. You were saying? I was just saying it's like, you know, bins are made out of... Yarn. What could we have done with the yarn? Knitted it into a cage to put him in. I should have made a big bag. Oh. Goblin Jr.'s like, snarf, snarf. Well, I realize my value in this group now. Glad to be part of the team. <laughs> <laughs> this goblin's pretty smart. Uh, so I'm going to put the fingerless mittens on the goblin and tie them around the mittens so he can't steal stuff. Uh, and I'm going to blindfold him and then I shove him into my bag of holding, which I keep over my tummy under my armor. But Great. I'm picturing is like just the goblin head coming out of this bag of holding. Yeah, I definitely put him in foot first. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just shove the head down yeah. inside in a hilarious like end of Jumanji way. Yep. So you stuff the goblin in, you cinch up your bag, you sneak it back up under your armor. But I think as much as you enjoy this bag of holding, it's also just an odd sensation to like shove a creature inside a bag under your armor. Like it feels also very strange just because I can't feel the creature. Yeah, like I'm yeah, used to I mean. you put something in a bag, the bag is heavier and this bag has nothing to do with it. So there is a part of me that will be wondering on an ongoing basis, how many goblins can I fit in this bag? And at some point I'm going to have to test that. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I'm just saying, so I have a friend that you might meet at some point called Otto, and they're my familiar, and I make a little animal buddy. Um, but the thing is, I can go inside of their brain, which might be very helpful, except I go just a little tad kind of tonic when that happens. So, you know, sometimes I have friends that'll like piggyback me or like put me in bags and stuff. So finding out how many goblins fit in that bag might actually be very useful information. See, this is great because we've got your going in the bag mittens coming from Mrs. Paisley. <laughs> I'm uh, Mrs. Paisley, you have finished the second set of mittens. They're and, slightly better than the first set because, like, you're warmed up now. And I've, like, knitted, like, a heart in, like, the palm of each hand. Does this mean we're friends? Oh, dear, we're more than friends. We're family. <gasps> ah! That's the best day ever! So, having done all that, are you doing anything else with the bodies that are there? I'm going to stare at them and say, do you think that he had siblings or a hobby? Oh, he looks like an origami guy. <laughs> a lot of them have pets. <laughs> oh, God. What's going to happen to the pets? I mean, they get raised by other goblins or they get eaten. Are they going to be Snark? nice goblins, those? Are they going to be good goblins? What if they don't actually, they have no personal connection to these pets? Listen, what you, if the pets are going to go hungry? How you get and an the important pet who visit? happens to be named Autumn in my brain anyway, he's not going to have a very good life after because we've killed his owner. And Donald, what if he had a wife? Donald, what if he was engaged? Donald, what if he had to have a wife again? Donald, what if he was, oh Donald, my God, it was a week until his wedding day. How important is it that we get to this witch? <laughs> This episode of Dum Dums and Dragons features the voices of Ryan LaPlante at the Ryan LaPlante on Twitter, Tyler Hewitt at Tyler underscore Hewitt on Twitter, Laura Hamstra at El Hamstring on Twitter, our special guest, and our DM Tom McGee at McGee TD on Twitter. This episode's sound was edited and mixed by Laura Hamstra, and Dum Dums and Dragons artwork is by Del Borovic, who can be found at delborovic.com. Our theme songs are And Now for That Massive Coronary and Skipping Through the Orchestra Pit Part 1 by Peter Gresser, and our ad music is No Control and Chiefs by Jazzar, J A H. ZZAR, all available at freemusicarchive.org. When it comes to Dum Dums and Dice, you can visit our website at dumdumdice.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at dumdumdice, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash dumdumdice. But most importantly, we've got merchandise at redbubble.com slash people slash dumdumdice, or you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. That's D-U-M-B D-U-M-B D-I-C-E. And tune in next week for more Dum Dums and Dragons. Dragons.